Hey everyone, thanks for joining today. Well, we're clutch number five. Already the season is really starting to pick up. This is a very special clutch as it's also my birthday. So stick around. I'm Jack and you're watching Python Addiction. Hey everyone, thanks for joining today. Well, Today is a very special day for me. It's my birthday and I get eggs. So I cannot complain at that one bit. This particular pairing is with my boy Athis, who is the fire pinstripe and banana boy that I paired this time with Raven, who is my pewter girl. Pewter is cinnamon and pastel just in case you wanted to know. But we're going to pop these eggs off. As you can see from the overhead that I'm gonna show right now, that there is a couple that she pushed off to the side a little bit. And that's probably because this is a very large clutch. I don't think there's anything in particular that's bad with those particular eggs, but we'll go through, candle them and see. She laid these sometime last night as I did check on everything or, uh, the other day. So she's been sitting on these now for probably about 15 hours, give or take a couple of hours. And she's normally a pretty good mama. I normally don't have much of a problem with pulling eggs from her, but she's also a good mama being protective and uh, making sure that nothing happens to her eggs as well. So we're going to get right into this. It's the same exact thing that I've done for the last couple of videos. As far as all of the setup and everything, I've got my gloves on. So I can move right into this. So let's switch over to the overhead here. Hey, baby girl. So let me take, your, let me take you off your eggies. Oh, look at that nice clutch. And you gotta let go. Look at all those big eggs. Let go. You gotta let go. No. There you go, girl. Good girl. And we're switching over to the other one. Just like normal. She's a little bit of a bigger girl to begin with, so she probably won't concave in as much as some of the other girls. Because she's on the older side. But I like to make sure and feel, make sure that there's no eggs in her. I don't feel any other eggs in her. So that's a good thing. But from the look of the, the size of those eggs, they're huge. So she looks good on that side. And just like every other girl, she'll get a bath to wash the egg scent off from her. And that will kind of break her from the habit of wanting to incubate and allow me to get her back onto food a lot quicker so she can get back up to weight. So switching back over, we're gonna take the one that she pushed off to the side and then we'll grab these. She's kind of clinging to me. Those are some big eggs. Hi, baby girl. You gotta let go of daddy so I can put you back. I'll get you washed up a little bit later. Okay, now I gotta move her back to the rack for now. So I'll be right back. And I am back. So let's see what we have here. So this is the one individual one that was pushed off to the side. And here are two, four, six that were laid otherwise. So just like normal, setting everything up for the medium that I like to mix up and use.
Let me know in the comments below, what you, for those of you that are breeders, what do you like to use for your hatching medium when it comes to how you do things? I always like to get different people's opinions on things. Or let me know if you've actually tried this, this particular method as to how I use the Curlite mixed in with the Orbeez to make a self-made hatch rate mi mix. That'd be a, a good thing to hear on what other people use. Because there's no one particular right way. I guess it's use what works. And for me, this is what works. So I am going to first label these as number five. as this is the fifth clutch of the year. That looks more like an S than a five, but that'll work. So I'm gonna immediately, oh, that one's got plenty of vein work. Doesn't look bad, so. We'll put that off to the side. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark this one just with a little extra line. So I know that that was kicked off to the side. <coughs> Excuse me. I wanna actually see if mom knows when it comes to that to see if that one hatches out. My theory is she was just going through and pushing them out and that one just got kicked out by happenstance but we'll see it's a good experiment a good thing to to, to just check and see so i'm going to go through and get these other eggs separated as best as i can shows why I do the separating. Um, clutch number two that laid earlier this season, I did have one egg that went bad and separating them allows me to actually take that bad egg out before it carries to the other eggs. That egg had started growing a little bit of mold when I checked on it uh, just a few days into incubation and I wanted to see if I could potentially save it so I put some antifungal powder onto it and checked to see if I could save it and I checked them again last night and unfortunately it had gotten to a point to where it was safe for me to call it gone as as far as that goes i know some people say incubate it until um until there's a 100 percent guarantee and for me that 100 percent guarantee was when i lifted up the egg i could actually see the indent of the crate stuff that i use in the bottom of the egg along with mold growing there as well and it, it was that and the smell, you can tell when an egg goes bad. And it's easier and safer for the rest of the clutch to get it out of there as sooner than later because that mold can carry to the other eggs. So it's always important to, to do the best that you can to try to separate without obviously damaging the eggs or completely manhandling them um, as that can cause issues in of itself. But I try to do all of this within the first, I try to get egg, the eggs within the first 24 hours. And that's why during breeding when I'm doing the pairing and once I start seeing those egg laying 
activities like the paying attention to um, the prelay shed and stuff like that, that I'm checking in on my girls literally once a day just to see if they've laid and to check on them. And it, it only takes a couple of minutes just to to do a very quick check on them, but that that lets me catch them when the eggs, if they have laid, are still fresh enough, generally speaking, to be able to manipulate them like I'm doing right now to get them separated relatively safely without having to worry too much about them being uh, that that glue, that natural glue that's holding them together, uh, becoming so uh, connected, so uh, solidified that you can't separate them. Because after about 24 hours, it you will end up tearing the egg before separating them in most cases because this natural glue that is holding them together is designed by nature to do exactly that keep them together and it's in the natural order of incubation they want to keep together because the eggs generate as they're growing as they're maturing and developing they generate their own heat and mom being wrapped around them generates her own heat. So it's a way for the whole unit to kind of self-regulate and to transfer that heat between eggs so the whole clutch can incubate itself and, and maintain that proper temperature range. So it's, a, it's nature's way of allowing for that that heat transfer and stuff like that by making sure that they stick together. But when we're doing incubation artificially, we don't need that because we're putting them into an incubator with the proper humidity, with the proper heat to where they don't need to necessarily be stuck together and we can actually watch them and regulate them ourselves. So I am all set here. I am going to reorient these because these are bigger eggs. These are bigger eggs. So I'm going to have to kind of reorient these a little bit because I don't like my eggs touching the sides of the container for a couple of different reasons as I've if this is the first time you're watching one of these videos for me um, you'll see that when you put the press and seal on and you seal everything up because of keeping that humidity up there it'll develop a little bit of condensation normally on the top of the press and seal and I have my actual uh, trays or the uh, the shelves within my incubator are very slightly tilted backwards so anything that's up here gravity wise will automatically roll off of the press and seal that I use and then roll down the side so it's reabsorbed into the hatch right medium that I made and that humidity cycle just keeps going so it keeps the air humid without allowing the water droplets to actually form on the eggs which can cause mold and other issues during the incubation process. I have these all set up now as you can see from the overhead. I already went through and did the candling on this one so I'm going to look at the candling for the rest of these and you can really see a really good uh, on here the uh, veins on these even from this camera up here I can see those veins really nicely showing up through the video really good there that's gonna get tilted that way just a little bit really good there 
So these are all very, very healthy eggs. I am not complaining there. And we will turn off that light. And then just to prevent things from rolling around, when I go do go to check on these, I use, again, some of these little plant stakes. And I just kind of slip them in here. They act as a way to just keep things from rolling around. So if I have to lift this bin up for anything, I can lift it up without worrying that the eggs are going to roll around anywhere. And as usual, like I was just saying, I use a bit of press and seal on the top. They get a little, I, I should actually buy stock in them for how much of this I end up using at each uh, season when it comes to because when I go to open them up I gen depending on how much condensation is on the top of it if I have to I'll replace it when I go to open it up and check I normally check uh, once with uh, I check one after one week and then every two weeks after that normally unless when I'm going into the incubator and if I smell something weird, I'm going to kind of take a look at what's there to see if there's an egg going bad or something like that, like with clutch number two. I double-checked on that one because I saw that I had to put the powder on that particular clutch for that one egg that was going bad, so I kept a little bit of an extra eye on that one. But this one will go into the incubator today, and... The countdown begins for, uh, I count 58 days is what I track, uh, but I normally start really looking in them on a daily basis, starting at like day 52, as that's generally, generally, um, the earliest that I've ever had eggs hatching is 52 days after I put them into the incubator. Um, I've had that happen once, but normally 56 to 58 days is the normal for me. Um, and I've had a couple that have gone like 60, 61 days, but I normally wait for one, at least one to pip before I start cutting. And if I see one pip on day like 56, I'll actually leave them in there for 24 hours to see if more pip before I actually look at doing cuttings. Um, so you guys can stay tuned for those live videos as I will do all of my egg cuttings for each uh, uh, clutch of eggs live. So as we get into the beginning of June, the that time frame onwards I'll start doing regular live videos and there'll be different times of the week uh, depending on when I get clutches that uh, are ready to pip so keep uh, so make sure that you're subscribed to the channel if you're not already as I will do my best to post a little notification in during the morning that day when I am gonna go live and I'll generally go live at around 7 or 8 p.m. Eastern uh, to make sure that people can get on and watch as far as that goes. A lot of people like watching the egg cuttings and getting those same reactions as me because you guys are seeing the eggs and what's popping out for the first time right along with me and I really enjoy sharing that. So stay tuned for that. If you like this video, please do hit that like button as that lets me know that you guys enjoy this type of content and these types of videos. And if you have any comments, like I was saying earlier, comment in the, the, the comment section below when it comes to the, the medium that you use for your hatching if you're a breeder um, or what you're considering on using if you haven't gotten into breeding yet but you're thinking about it. I'd like to hear from you on that. Um, on a 
Side note in regards to the video mosaic and the many faces of the reptile army video and the picture collage that I've been putting together, that I'm still waiting on the final copyright release before I can actually post that stuff. So please, if you've been waiting for that, please do continue to stay tuned, stay subscribed to my channel as that will get posted and I will be making sure to make announcements on that once that's ready to go live. Um, so you guys will know as soon as I know for the most part because it's ready to go. I'm just waiting for those releases before I can actually publish anything. So just keep sticking with us as far as that goes. I'm waiting just as impatiently as some of you are to be able to release it because that's been a, a big work for me to do and something that I would really like to share but I just have to play that waiting game, unfortunately. But until next time, you guys, make sure again that you're subscribed to the channel and click to that notification icon if you haven't done so already, as that'll let you know when I do new videos, it'll let you know when I get the lives posted, and it'll let you know when I do my normal weekly content as I tend to push at least one video a week. But until next time, you guys, I love you all. I'm Jack, and you've been watching. Python addiction.